Hi everyone, welcome to CEO Meet. My name is Pip Wilkins. I am the Chief Executive of the British Franchise Association and I'm delighted to be joined by one of our members today, Joe Hinton from UK Business Mentoring. So uh, it says UK BM. Why don't you explain, Joe, first and foremost, what you do? Thank you very much, Pip. Yeah, I'd be delighted to. UK Business Mentoring, we started in 2009 and, and I was passionate when I left the corporate world about two things, coaching, and mentoring and helping people develop and working with small businesses so I put the two things together and what we do is basically we go into a business and we do a review of the business and that covers everything from people management marketing financial you name it and we speak to as far as possible every single member of staff to get feedback about the business the company etc and then normally a week or two later we play that back to the business owner and we tell them the good the bad and sometimes the ugly about their business and we help them then to put things right and then develop a strategy for them to take the business wherever it is they want it to go, whether that be a five year exit strategy or to take it you know, for 15 years and then maybe sell out to the staff, um, employee ownership trust or whatever it might be. And along the journey, we stick with them and we help them with any hurdles they have to get over and to you know, really take them along to the exit that they want that's best for them and their family. Um, and so that mentoring and training, is that across the entire team um, of the company that you work with or more at kind of the senior CEO exec board level? Yeah, it's a good point because um, some of our clients, we work just with the business owner. Mm -hmm. but many of our clients, we include maybe the board or indeed other members of the team. And sometimes we'll be involved in training their staff around whatever it might be. So we tailor it to whatever the business needs. And because we've got that background in training as well, so if it's leadership and management training or sales training or whatever, we can bring that into the game as well. Okay, so you have some fundamental core values which um, are up on the screen, which I love. Um, so talk to us about those values and why they're so important to you and to the business. When I started the business, I'd come out of the corporate world. And in the corporate world, we always had the, the values were all about um, the customers being at heart of everything we do. And I'm going to be honest, in the corporate world where I was, I didn't think that was true. And it was always just a little bit of a, a badge there. So when I started my own business, I was passionate that we really do put the clients first. And integrity and honesty in everything we do is what we're all about. And we also say to clients, look, there's no long contract with us. We do business on the shake of a hand or on an elbow these days. Yeah. And that lasts as long as you feel it's adding value to your business and to yourself. And if we ever do a piece of work, whether we review your business or whatever it might be, and you don't feel it's added value, then you're not expected to pay. It's a no quibble guarantee. Uh, and those are very much values that are close to my heart. And when we take on new franchisees, we explain that these are the non-negotiables. We look for people who have those kind of values that match ours. And that's incredibly important to us. Fantastic. So we've obviously come out of a tough couple of years with the pandemic. What have been the kind of key trends and challenges you've seen for businesses in that time and how have you really supported them? Yeah, I mean, go back um, nearly two years to, uh, to March, two years ago, um, and the pandemic hit. And you know, for many businesses, it was an absolute shock because we didn't, well, obviously we didn't see it coming. But even four, six weeks before, we hadn't seen it coming. So it put a lot of our businesses completely back. A lot of our clients had plans, had contracts that all of a sudden dropped out. So we thought, what's the best way we can help our clients? So for that first lockdown period, we helped them by not charging any fees at all. We were still providing support and help via Zoom rather than face to face, but we, we suspended all our charges and that brought a lot of goodwill to the clients. They kind of liked the fact we went through pain with them. Mm -hmm. And then we were predominantly helping them with changing their business model to adapt to the new circumstances helping them get in finance via government loan schemes or the government yeah. grants, which did take a lot of our time to get in the C-bill loans, et cetera. And we were proud that we didn't charge for any of that. It was just about helping the clients through that. And as I say, I think they gave us a lot of goodwill with clients and we lost no clients through that period at all. But, it, but it's been tough, but a lot of our clients have come out stronger and better because yeah. they've had to be more flexible. You know, I had a client in um, experiential events and every event was cancelled two years ago, every yeah. event they've contracted to do. But they changed their business model and then took a lot of what they do to their clients and to the clients' customers, and then did a lot of work for some of the hospitals, et cetera. So 
they've completely changed their model, got through the pandemic, and now oh. they're back on the kind of where they were before and the, the, the road to growth. I think, um, you know, one of the things that we've seen, obviously, we've, we've spoken and pivot, resilience, all of those kind of words have come out a lot. Um, but I do think that businesses after the pandemic, it, it's going to be a natural thing, isn't it, to want to train to be more resilient, to want to be able to pivot faster. Have you seen any of your services and training change to, to kind of keep brands at the forefront and get them ready to be able to change and pivot faster? Yeah, I think the, the very think mouthful the, of a question, that one. Sorry. No, that's right. <laughs> I think the biggest change we've seen is the change of how they deal with their staff. Mm -hmm. Because I think throughout the whole pen pandemic, a lot of staff went through a lot in terms of furlough, working from home, etc. So what we now see is businesses that are far take a far more flexible approach to their staff. And they're more um, in tune with what their staff need. And particularly at the moment where it's so hard to recruit. You know, we've got 1.1 million vacancies across the country. Yeah. So a lot of my clients find it very difficult to recruit. So a lot of what we've been doing with them is about retention, recruitment of staff, but particularly retention. And what makes staff stay with you? What makes a business sticky so that people want to stay, uh, not just for a year, but for many years with that business? So a lot of it's been around staff engagement, leadership and management training. So just as a takeaway then for some of the people listening to this, what does make a business sticky for staff? Uh, Lots of things that make um, engagement right, but a lot of business owners think it's just all about the money. And obviously a fair salary package, reward package is important, but that's not the thing that makes staff stay. It's about the environment. Is it a good, healthy environment? How are they managed? Are they treated with respect? Mm -hmm. Are they challenged as an individual? And are they allowed to grow and take responsibility in that business? All of those things add up to the things that make a business what we call sticky and people want to stay with you. And there's never been a greater time when that's been so important as now because there are so many vacancies out there. Well, okay, so for UK business mentoring, what's your kind of next sort of few years? What does it look like for you in terms of plans and growth? Well, we're, we're relatively small at the moment and we're very picky over who we take as franchisees because they've got to have good business experience mm -hmm. got to align with our values so we've got eight franchises at the moment over the next two years i want to get that to 20 so we're on a fi fairly fast track growth plan i want to get there um, after three years i want to be at 30 and also because we've had interest from abroad i'd like to start thinking internationally because the kind of things we do you know we've got anywhere with any type of business so two, three years growth across the UK and then start thinking internationally. Fantastic. Well, we'd love to help you on the international growth side. It's something I'm very passionate about. Um, in terms of then what you're looking for, so um, to grow, what are the key attributes you're looking for in a potential franchisee? Okay. I like to think the Japanese have a word for it. It's called Ichigai. And Ichigai means, I'm sure you, you, you might have heard this, Ichigai means you find your reason for being. Mm -hmm. We look for people who really get job satisfaction from helping others, seeing them grow, seeing them develop. That's, that's paramount um, because all of our team at the moment, you know, we talk about the things we've helped clients with and you can see it in their faces. They love it. The fact you've helped somebody else grow and grow their business. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of number one. And then behind that, we want people who've got good business experience. And that could have been in the corporate world. They may have run a business themselves. They might have been an accountant, but it's that they've been involved in an environment where they're looking at PL, they're doing some leadership and management, etc. So kind of broad business experience. Uh, and we want people as well who are going to go out and represent the brand and do it the way that we do it. I mean, we're very um, casual, laid back in terms of how we how we deal with our uh, franchisees. You know, we tell them we're very, we're here to support you, but it's your business. So you go out and develop it. But we're very close as a team. One of the one of our new franchisees recently said, he said this didn't feel like buying a franchise he said it felt more like joining a club of like-minded people and i really like that the fact that we are like-minded and we're all trying to achieve the same thing that's brilliant okay my final question it's one that i ask everyone that does these um what would be your top tip if someone was looking to buy a franchise what would you tell them to do i'm going to go back to the values because i really think that you need to understand your own values what's important to you because it's a big step behind a franchise. You're going to be starting up in business. 
So I think understanding your own values and then looking for a business that has similar values to you mm -hmm. that you can align to, I think is really important. Yeah, there's all the other checks and measures you're going to do on that franchise. But I think make sure it's something that your is aligned to your values and that you're passionate about as well. Because we do see a lot of people who are in business. And if you're not passionate about your business, it really is a struggle. So it's got to be something that you've got a really interest in that you can be passionate about and really want to do. And as I say, those those values are aligned to the franchise. Fantastic. Joe, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. It's been awesome. Pleasure, Pip. Thank you very much for the time.